jinxed you talking about the coffin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. There we go. Get ready, it's time for Motorsports Madness. Powered by the staff at Race Chaser Online. Your motorsports, your way, every day. And now, here's your host, Jacob Seelman. Howdy, y'all. And, and welcome, welcome to another round, round of Motorsports, motorsports Madness. Madness. Jacob, Jacob Seelman, Seelman, Tom, Tom Baker, Baker, and our, our special, special guest, guest for the evening, evening Randy, Randy Pettit from strutmasters.com, who uh, is going to be a lot of fun tonight. We've already discovered that in the uh, the time that he's been here with us prior to the show. Randy, Randy's going to bring the entertainment value that Tom and I sometimes lack. Okay. I, I, I resemble that remark. <laughs> or he's just going to raise the bar. That's what we want. Yes. Exactly. So... <laughs> We're excited. Randy Miller and Chris Murdoch are behind the glass punching buttons and keeping us all in line so we don't just completely drive the train off the tracks. We have a lot to talk about on this show tonight. We also have a special guest who's going to be joining us in the second half of the show, NASCAR K&M Pro Series West driver, Joey Tanner, who is fresh off a third place run at the dirt track at Las Vegas Motor Speedway in the season opener for the K&N West a week ago. Going to be joining us in the second hour. Of course, we are going into NASCAR Race Weekend at ISM Raceway, formerly known as Phoenix. And for those of us who are never going to get used to ISM and probably still always call it Phoenix, it's still known as Phoenix. <laughs> exactly. My good buddy, <laughs> I want to give a shout out to Ronnie Bassett Jr. He's going out there and going to be starting in his first Xfinity Series race, and I know that whole family's really excited. I'm excited about that too for yes, Ronnie Jr. I'm getting a so. shot in the second car for Mario Gosselin's DGM racing team as a teammate to Josh Williams, who in his own right, Josh is coming off a career best finish, uh, almost most got to the top 15 in the Las Vegas NASCAR Xfinity Series race last weekend. So it really all the way around for DGM racing, there's a lot of positives going right now and excited to see Ronnie make his first of what we all hope I think are many National Series starts starting this weekend at ISM. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the odds of uh, Kyle Busch getting closer and closer to 200. I would argue that the odds are pretty good considering yeah. he's in an Xfinity race this weekend. <laughs> we'll talk about a change to the package again because we're on a short track this right. weekend. And we'll see. There's there's a whole bunch of other news and stuff that we can break down as this show goes on. There's even an IndyCar race happening on Sunday at St. Petersburg. Works for me. We're excited about that. We're going to do some business, and then we'll roll on with Motorsports Madness right after this. Don't go anywhere. You own a performance car, and you know how to drive, but you want to learn real performance driving. Well, Bunky, get that car off the street and onto the track. Summit Point Motorsports Park, the Mid-Atlantic's premier road racing facility, located just over an hour from D.C. in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, is the place to go. And you'll find that Friday at the track is going to give you what you need. For less than a monthly car payment, you can attend this regularly scheduled one-day instructional event in your street car on one of Summit Point's three world-class road racing circuits. You'll receive classroom instruction, skid pad instruction in their cars, including front and rear skid control, and four 20-minute in-your-car instructional sessions from a professional instructor. Have fun, go fast, and really learn how to drive. Call 304-725-8444 for class schedules and details. That's 304-725-8444. Friday at the track at Summit Point Motorsports Park. Green light. Hey girl, school zone. I'm getting hungry, car changing lanes. You wanna meet me for pizza? Stop sign, intersection clear. Yeah, street, pizza sounds good. Ball in street, girl in street. <gasps> it's hard to concentrate on two things at once, like texting and driving. Stop the text, stop the wrecks. How will you stop texting and driving? Tell us at stoptextstoprex.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Here's an important message from Rad and this station. Hi, this is Bob Sheehan from Blues Traveler for Rad, recording artists against drunk driving. I like to party just as much as the next guy, maybe even more. But the one thing I won't do after I've had a few is get in the car and drive. Don't blow it. Always choose a designated driver. Remember, music lives and so should you. Automotive technicians and auto service trainees. 
How would you like to work at the beach and perform for one of the best car care centers in the nation? Lewis Meineke is now looking for skilled automotive technicians to join their award-winning team. If you're a gearhead that knows his or her stuff, or a young up-and-comer that has the motivation and drive to succeed, then you need to make this call today. 302-827-2054. Lewis Meineke Car Care Center, located in beautiful Lewis, Delaware, offers a highly competitive compensation plan, great benefits, a flexible schedule, and did we mention that you're going to be working at the beach? Plus, there's a signing bonus for the right candidates. Technicians must be ASE certified and have a minimum of six years' experience. Beginners advance at your own pace in one of several entry-level positions. But whatever you do, don't wait. These jobs will go fast. Call Tim at 302-827-2054. That's 302-827-2054. Lewis Meineke Car Care Center. Rev up your career. This is Anthony Alfredo, and you're listening to the Performance Motorsports Network. Now back to the show. I'm digging the new music. Yes. I'm really digging it. Welcome back to Motorsports Madness. Jacob Seelman, Tom Baker, Randy Pettit at the table tonight as we talk all things motorsports. You never know where we're going to go. Before we go to the first big news item of the day, I uh, want to update a story that broke... Uh, early in the week and update on sprint car and midget driver Tanner Thorson yes. who has spent some time in the NASCAR National Series ranks recently. Uh, Tanner uh, confirmed earlier today by USAC officials is still hospitalized after he was involved in a multi-car accident in California on his way home from the World of Outlaws events last week. Uh, he underwent surgery for a second time on Wednesday to repair his right foot, which was broken in the crash. The first operation he went through on Monday was to set a broken left arm. Uh, he had a breathing tube it's installed as well. Both lungs were Oof. collapsed, and, he, and one of his lungs was actually punctured from a broken rib during the accident. Cracked sternum, um, couple of broken ribs, but despite all that, they say he's going to make a full recovery, which is certainly uh, good news, Tom. I know we're, oh, we're yeah, you know, sure. that's what we're all very thankful for is that Tanner's going to be, you know, able to get back at it and, and go again. And it's obviously not the situation you want to have happen, but, no. you know, it's, we can fix people if they're still alive to be fixed. And luckily Tanner's still with us to be able to be fixed. Thank the Lord. Yeah. That was just, uh, that was a very nasty crash and, you know, just a, a situation again, it's, it's so tough because we're all human and we all push ourselves sometimes past the limit and, you know, drowsy driving never has a good result. And, um, that's, uh, it's just, again, it's great to see that at least the injuries that he has, though it's a long road to recovery, the injuries that he has will likely be 100% healed and he can eventually get back in the race car. And, you know, first we got to get him back to normal. Yes. And uh, we'll definitely uh, keep keep him and his family in our absolutely. prayers. Absolutely. That's a pretty, pretty tough sure. deal for them. So with, with that said, we'll move to some brighter news, actually some very interesting news yeah. that broke earlier today uh, and it re in regards to a track that many stock car fans have you know, known, loved, and, and been very passionate about over the last few years. But the possibility of a revival of racing at Rockingham Speedway has gotten a little brighter this week, and it's thanks to the folks uh, in the North Carolina governor's office and Governor Roy Cooper, who, when they released the state budget earlier today, Tom, had about $8 million there earmarked for capital improvements to Rockingham, which yeah. when, when, you look at, <clears throat> when you look at the situation that track has been in the last couple years is huge from a standpoint of getting the track back where it needs to be to host top level events. They, you know, they want NASCAR back. They've been in conversations with NASCAR, but there's a lot that they needed to do. They need some water extensions. They needed a pedestrian bridge. The track at this point needs to be repaved. Some facilities need to be upgraded. 
the restrooms need to be upgraded. Um, you know, a, a lot of that money is in, you know, that's where this money is going to, this grant is going to. Now, the Speedway is still responsible for 25% of the total cost of the project, but when you consider that's maybe raising, you know, two and a half to three million dollars yeah. as opposed to 11 million dollars, this is a good situation, and I'm hoping this is a good sign to when we get to 2020, you know, they're talking about these improvements being done in time for 2021. The possibility of Rockingham being involved in the schedule revamp that Steve Phelps and the other folks at NASCAR are working on. Well, I think that's really what's probably going on here, at least from the standpoint of um, you would have to think potentially a truck race and maybe even an Xfinity race. I mean, Randy, you've been involved with managing racetracks just as I have, and you understand the type of re repairs and upgrades that need to be made in a situation like this. And the fact that the state of North Carolina has decided to, to get behind this and bring this, you know, bring this track back, I think says a lot about the people who are currently owning and operating it, because obviously they see that the potential for long-term success is there. Otherwise they're not putting that grant money out there. Right. Exactly. And, and, you know, that racetrack is is so far away from town that any money spent realistically is earmarked just for the racetrack. Right. Now, I will say that don't forget, you've got the drag strip right across the street. Uh, that's a wonderful area. That area needs uh, the economy to be revived. Um, that was one of my first cup races as a kid. Uh, funny story, when Andy Hillenberg was running the racetrack, I had an opportunity to talk with him a little bit. And I pulled out a $20 bill, and he's like, what is that? I'm like, this is the 20 bucks I owe you from my snuck in at a camper <laughs> when I was a kid. <laughs> he handed me my 20 back. He's like, I, I think the statute of limitations is ran. <laughs> and I had a chance to, uh, to meet uh, Donnie Allison for the first time in a while this past weekend at a uh, triad racing preview event that I did in Winston-Salem to raise some money for charity. And, and I was sharing with Donnie, I remember when he was in Hoss Ellington's mm -hmm. car and smoked everybody in that number one car at Rockingham. A lot of great memories there. Uh, probably my, my finest hour there is when I was one of the television announcers for the old Hooters Pro Cup series, and Chase Elliott got his first uh, win on a, uh, you know, a super speedway. That was his first super mm -hmm. speedway victory, and it was really cool to interview uh, Chase and his father, Bill, uh, in the winter circle there at the Rock. So very special place for me, and I'm really, you know, as a North Carolinian and a huge race fan, and as someone that's been in the sport, I'm really, really glad that The Rock is on its way back, hopefully, to where we can have some races there. And, you know, a lot of other stuff they're planning there, too, like concerts and special events. Yeah. And, and that's the only way to really make a racetrack work. Right. No matter to. where you're at. Yeah, you've in got In my to. opinion, you have got to have more than just racing. You've got to have broad community appeal. Right. And I think they're on the right track, and I wish them well. Yeah, it, it's a very interesting situation and when you talk about the history of of rockingham i guess they're calling it the rock speedway right. now as part of the entertainment complex but I, it, it's funny i was actually when i was putting our story together for speed sport earlier today and looking back at the history and particularly the cup series history at rockingham if this isn't a sign of the times there are a whopping zero active cup series drivers who have a win at Rockingham in Cup Series competition. Right, because Kenseth is gone. Uh, yep. Bill Elliott actually got his last victory in the Cup Series at the Rock. And you're right. It's it's uh, uh, it's, the, it's old school now yeah, to the, new fans the, anyway. The one driver that I thought might have snuck one out, even though it would have been early still in his career, was Jimmy Johnson. But even, even Jimmy, you know, the early years of his career – uh, wasn't able to pick one up. In fact, when Jimmy was getting started, that was the era in which uh, Kenseth was still very strong there. And as you mentioned, uh, Bill Elliott got his last win in the second-to-last race at Rockingham. And stop and consider another driver who got one of his last Cup Series wins, Tom, at Rockingham, Johnny Benson. Yeah. In 2002. Yep. Johnny be good. Yep. Sure did. He was good. He was good there, too. He was. Yes, he was. And then and then there was that guy that just recently retired, that McMurray kid that won the last four Xfinity Series races in a row at Rockingham. 
Did we, he really? He did four in a row in what was then Bush series competition. I don't I competition. remember him winning there, but I, re, I don't yeah. remember him winning four in a row. Yes, he Ouch. did. He won the last four Bush Ouch. series races at, from from the end of 2002 through the start of 2004. Three of them actually were with Chip Ganassi Racing at that point. Interesting. Wow. So yeah, it's I, this is quite a project, Randy. But I'm excited to see that it's coming together and that it's going to happen because I, everybody's been talking about bring back Rockingham, bring back North Wilkesboro. Well, North Wilkesboro's dead. Yeah, Wilkesboro's a little too far gone unless someone's got lottery well, money. if I win the lottery, I'm going to buy North Wilkesboro Speedway and revive it. There yeah, I think we all slash. would do that. I think yeah, any of us because would. Because I, yeah. I was one of the voices of North Wilkesboro Speedway when I was a real young guy. had a real pretty head of hair and just getting <laughs> started in the sport. And that racetrack is near and dear to my heart. So. Yeah. Uh, don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have a question for you when we get back from the break, though. Yes, we do. Uh, unfortunately, we're short on time, so we're going to get ready to uh, run off to a break before Randy chucks something across the way at me. Producer Randy, I should say. Randy so Miller. We're going to step aside, and when we return, Motorsports Madness rolls on here on Race Chaser Radio. We'll be right back after this. Do you love the sound of high revving motors? Do you want to get your car sideways right at the ragged edge of control? If you've always wanted to try drifting or learn to improve your drifting skills, Summit Point Motorsports Park, the Mid-Atlantic's premier motorsports facility, has the expert instructors and the specialized track to teach you how to drift and the skills necessary to drift competitively. From skid pad to open sessions, Summit Point Motorsports Park has the safe and open environment that allows drifters of all skill levels, new to intermediate, to get sideways and smoke it. With a focus on safety and the skill set necessary to drift competitively, Summit Point Motorsports Park's Drift Nirvana is just the thing for you. Call for your reservation today, 304-725-8444. Or for more information, go online, summitpoint-raceway.com, or you can email them at office at bsrinc.com. Drift Nirvana, getting you sideways the right way. HMS Motorsport is the leader in motorsport safety. HMS serves the majority of Monster Energy NASCAR Cup, Xfinity, Camping World Truck, IndyCar, and IMSA WeatherTech teams, as well as countless SCCA and club level racers and driving enthusiasts throughout North America. Featuring world-renowned brands like Schubert Helmets, Schroep Belts, Adidas Suits and Shoes, Lifeline Fire Systems, and even Racecom Radio Kits, HMS has the right product for your type of racing and your budget. Their representatives are experts on only one thing, making your track driving as safe as so possible. The main the audio. With locations in Mooresville, North Carolina and Danvers, Massachusetts, the HMS staff is always ready to take the time to help you find the right product for your safety needs. Don't settle for second when it comes to motorsport safety. Stop in to HMS Motorsport. Visit them on their website at hmsmotorsport.com or send them a message on Facebook and tell them the folks from PMN Radio sent you. What an awesome game. <laughs> What's up with your car? I don't know. It won't start. How are we getting home? Chill. My parents signed me up for the roadside assistance from Lewis Meineke. It was free with my oil change. They'll come and get the car started or get us home and tow the car to the shop. Good to know. With my driving, my parents never know what to expect. When you join the Meineke Car Care Club with a $35 preferred service, you get four free months of roadside assistance, including tire change, battery jump, lockout service, towing, and more. Contact Lewis Meineke, located on Route 1, or call 827-2054. When do you think of a plumber? Like most people, even if it's an emergency, you can be confident about who will arrive to help you. For quality and reliability, count on someone you can trust. Call on the plumbing services of Hague Quality Water of Maryland. Plumbing doesn't have to be an emergency. We handle all kinds of preventative maintenance, too. Hague Quality Water of Maryland is family-owned here in Annapolis since 1993. For a refreshing choice, call us. 84-WATER or visit us online. COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, is a lung disease that robs people of their ability to breathe. As many as 24 million Americans suffer from COPD, also known as chronic bronchitis or emphysema, and half of them don't know they have the disease. If you or someone you love is over 35 and has smoked more than 100 cigarettes in their lifetime, visit driveforcopd.org and take the screener, then take that to your doctor. I'm Jeff Stoltz, and I drive for COPD. Hi, I'm Noah Gregson, and you're listening to Motorsports Madness on PMN, the Performance Motorsports Network. Welcome back to Motorsports Madness. Jacob Seelman, 
Tom Baker, Randy Pettit from strutmasters.com, talking racing. And we were talking about Rockingham in our last segment. Yes. And we were. As we continue onward with the show. Before we continue before on with before the we show, continue on let me, let me oh, grab that's a right. question for that's Randy. That's right. We had a chat for Pettit chat from, question for yeah, Randy. From Joshua Phillips. He wants to know, will Randy ever head back to Bowman Gray Stadium? Oh, we're not going to put you on the spot or anything. <laughs> well, you know what? I was uh, honored to be a part of the Triad Racing Preview in Winston-Salem this past Saturday. We had the Allison brothers. We had half the Alabama gang there. We had Bobby and Donnie there. Uh, we had uh, Dale Inman showed up. Wow, uh, the, nice. The brains behind uh, Petty Enterprises was there. We had Margaret Sue Turner Wright, uh, the daughter of legendary uh, Curtis Turner. And uh, Rex White was ill and couldn't make it, but we had uh, we had a pretty nice front row of uh, Hall of Famers there. We had all the who's who of the Bowman Gray Stadium, uh, modified champions of the past and present. And, you know, I think that's what got all that stuff going. And, man, my phone just blew up over the weekend, dude. I had, I'm going to guess, probably over 100 uh, Facebook and messages and texts and people begging me to come back and, well, I'll just say this: uh, it's it's being entertained. Uh, we're we're in talks. My agent and their agent are talking, and uh, we we'll, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Your people and their people exactly. are going to do lunch. Well, then... you know, Bowman Gray is where I grew up. Uh, it it is uh, along with North Wilkesboro, one of my first loves, and you know I work for Strutmasters.com, and you know we're sponsoring Clay Milliken and the yep. NHRA Top Fuel Series, and. There may be some times when I need to be at the track for that. Uh, I've got a very busy schedule at work. I'm just sitting here looking at my car show schedule. I'm going to be in Myrtle Beach, uh, Sharp Motor Speedway, Greensboro, Raleigh for the Good Guys show. So the boss is keeping me pretty busy. But he loves Bowman Gray too, Tom. And, and uh, I, th I think he might, the godfather of Strut Masters just might give me his blessing to go back to the Madhouse. So stay tuned. Well, that's interesting. Talk a little bit about Strutmasters because obviously you guys came on as our NHRA segment sponsor. Talk a little bit about Strutmasters and what Strutmasters is and what it does. You're dealing with suspension. Exactly. Um, it all started when our founder, Chip Lofton, uh, he bought a 10-year-old Lincoln Continental from somebody that started out as a friend. <laughs> I don't know if they're still a friend. I hope they are. But Chip, like a lot of people, bought a 10-year-old luxury car, had some miles on it, but it was a nice-looking car, had a lot of kick left in it. He took his family on vacation. I believe they were going to Dollywood, if memory serves, and the air suspension on that car started misbehaving, and the car would intermittently go all the way down in the back. Chip would get out, go and slammed the trunk and messed with stuff and <laughs> slammed the door and cursed. And finally, when he slammed the door hard enough, he didn't know it at the time, but he, he made the air compressor in the car reset and it would pump back up. And he'd drive a few more miles and, uh, you know, repeat all the way mm -hmm. to uh, Tennessee and all the way back home. He got a repair quote from the local dealer. It was $3,500 to repair a car that was honestly probably a $1,500, $2,000 car. And many people have been in that boat, you know, where they bought a, a used luxury car, SUV, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. And then they stumble onto the fact that it has what we call an active suspension. Now, guys, that can be anything computerized. That can be air ride, electronic struts, like on the front of yeah. a Tahoe or Suburban. It can, oh, my goodness, don't get me started on the Mercedes-Benz. They have what's called ABC or active body control, and that's an active hydraulic system. It can cost 10 to 12 grand guys wow. to fix that car to dealer and if you got a if you got a used mercedes it might only be worth eight to ten grand anyway are you really going to go plunk down ten grand to fix just the suspension probably not so chip solved the problem on his car uh, he cooked up the world's fo first fully assembled uh, conversion kit and we call it a complete suspension uh, overhaul you you can basically unbolt the factory components like your strut shocks air springs, airbags, whatever it has, and put our stuff on there. And it's it's pretty easy to do. If you can do a brake job or do regular maintenance on a car and you got some tools and got a got a you know half a day on the weekend, you can knock it out. And it started a whole industry. You know, Chip tripped over this with his own car. And guys, this is now a two hundred million dollar industry. Uh, we've had a lot of folks come in over the years and kind of steal our ideas and there, you know, you see stuff being made in China now. It's all over the Internet. But Strut Masters, the original, we're still at it. We're mm -hmm. in Roxborough, North Carolina. We've been at it for 20 years. 
And, you know, it's really fun every day. The phone rings, you know, hundreds of times a day, and we, we talk to shops, we talk to parts stores, dealerships, and we talk to a lot of vehicle owners. And it's really satisfying for us that we're able to help those people fix their car, save them thousands of dollars. And, you know, we make some money, and we give it back. Chip is very generous. He's given to the motorsports community very generously oh, over absolutely. the years. And, you know, we've, we've also done a lot of other good works that we won't talk about because those are Chip's baby. But, you know, it's, it's an honor to work for a family-owned company that helps people every day. Our service is fantastic. We're not perfect, but when we do make a mistake, we make it right. And, you know, it's hard to get good service in this world. And, and I'm proud to be a part of the Strut Masters family because we help so many people across the country every day. Well, I mean, you guys have, um, you guys have a few things. You guys have um stuff for motorcycles we do. you have stuff for f-150s I that's mean, right a lot mm. of things that people don't realize that that's Strut right. can do talk about that sure uh well our hottest product right now is our easy rider motorcycle air suspension products those are air shocks that are actually a hydraulic shock with uh, the little rubber airbag on there. We have the compressor, you got the gauge, you got everything you need to put it on your bike. And basically with the flip of the switch, you can raise and lower your bike. It makes it easier to get on and off of. If you got a passenger back there, they're gonna have a smooth, comfortable ride. And you know, when you when you take that thing down to Ocean Drive on Myrtle Beach, you can slam it down, you can go cruising and really enjoy your bike, whether you're, whether you're slamming it to go cruising or whether you got somebody on the back. If you're getting a little older, man, or, you know, if you're a little vertically challenged like some folks are, not to mention any names, <laughs> <laughs> and it's hard to get on and off that damn motorcycle when you're, when you're short, you know, <laughs> and when you're tall like me, you want to jack that thing way up, you know, so you can ride more comfortably. Whatever your situation, you can put those on your bike, and you're, it's an easy ride, man, just like the name says, easy rider. And you can get all that for under 500 bucks. Wow. We've got complete instructions. It's all designed, assembled. Everything's put together right there in North Carolina at our headquarters. Uh, that's our hottest and latest product. And you mentioned trucks. Yeah. Dodge Ram owners, listen up. Dodge Ram owners across the country, especially in the cold weather states and in Canada, it is all over the Internet. The air suspension on those trucks is failing. And, you know, our phone is now just going crazy with the Dodge Ram suspension. It's got air ride on it, Tom. Okay. And what that means is you're relying on a little air compressor and those rubber air springs to pump up the back end of your truck. And when it gets cold, that those airlines freeze up. That compressor freezes up, and the truck goes crashing to the ground, and, you know, it, it, it rides like a horse and buggy, and you can't tow anything with it. Mm -hmm. That's so fine. we just developed uh, the first uh, suspension conversion system for the Dodge Ram, and that is now on our website at strutmasters.com, or you can give us a call. They're back there right now. They'll be there at 10 o'clock tonight. Uh, it's 866-597-2397, or just go on to strutmasters.com, and one of our folks will take care of you. And it's a fraction. I mean, you can't buy one part at the dealer for what we can fix the whole truck or the whole vehicle. For. Is that just for Dodges, or do you have Ford, Chevy? That well, kind of? we're, we're, we also have the uh, the GMC products, uh, the, all the Ford and Lincoln SUVs, all the GM SUVs, okay. pretty much any luxury okay. car. It, listen, if it's got an active suspension, whether it's got Air Ride, Electronic, or that ABC, the active hydraulic, we have got a product for it and cool. if you call us and if you call us and we don't and you're close enough we'll let you bring that vehicle down and our r d team will go to work and they'll develop a product for it and you'll get a sweetheart of a deal getting your vehicle fixed that's too. great so uh, we that's part of what we enjoy is cooking up new product and helping people outstanding all right so uh good to have you guys on board and we're really appreciative of the support that you're giving to us here uh as we uh, continue with these shows each week. So uh, know that you've um, you you had some some time at Bowman Gray and maybe another stint coming. Perhaps we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. But uh, you did some time at North Wilkesboro as well, which is pretty uh, pretty amazing. Can you give us just a quick story or so? We got about uh, two three minutes left. In the sure. Um, I worked at North Wilkesboro Speedway. Now Earl Kelly, who is Winston Kelly's dad, Winston of course you know what 25 30 years on the motor racing network and the nascar hall of fame director and a friend uh winston and earl were kind enough to slide me in the booth a little bit i got i got an opportunity to work on some of the cup weekends and then we had the uh, coca-cola and the lowe's triple headers up there where we had the late model stocks we had the modified sometimes we had the dash series uh, sometimes we had the street stocks that was fun starting about 45 street stock cars at uh at, at north wilkesboro wow yeah 
So that was pretty entertaining. Sweet yeah, stocks. yeah. We, there wasn't 45 after the first lap, okay? <laughs> no. There, there were probably 20 <laughs> some that say, got to finish the take race. Take half of them off the track. <laughs> exactly. It, it, the the, the uh, overcrowded track took care of itself yeah. after just a couple of laps. Self cleaning. Anyway, exactly. And you know that was the thrill of a lifetime for a lot of those we weekend racers that have been racing at places like Bowman Gray and maybe Hickory and. Uh, Orange County, South Boston, you know, they got to race on a major league track. And it was uh, it was a thrill of a lifetime for those guys, especially, you know, when a guy like Dale Ward, you know, who was a sportsman driver at Bowman Gray, won at North Wilkesboro. I mean, you know, how cool was that? Uh, when, when our modified ace goes up there and outruns Jimmy Spencer and, you know, some of those uh, cup guys, it's pretty, pretty special oh, yeah. for them. Yeah, we need to find a way to get that connection back. Exactly. Um, yeah. But I've got a lot of cool Wilkesboro stories. But, you know, just seeing those get local guys win for the first time at a place like North Wilkesboro, uh, I'll never forget it. It was very special. So I have a question for everybody at the table before we go to break. Okay. Have you ever wanted a home that has a giant 88 sculpture in honor of Dale Jr.? No. Not really. <laughs> we, we've got a Dale I Jr. Mean, if, car if, in our break room at work. <laughs> Are you going to give it yeah. to me? I mean, is it free? Well, <laughs> if only it were free. Uh, it, it's valued at a uh, tidy little sum of $14.8 million. Jeez. And <laughs> I have discovered... No, I don't want it. <laughs> I've discovered where it is and who it belongs to, but I'm not going to tell you right now. After we're gonna the wait break. Until we come back. Okay, you Ryan. did it before I I'll could. Get my, <laughs> I'll, get my, I'll get my money ready during the break. All right. <laughs> See, he's good at this. More Motorsports Madden is right around the turn. Stick with us. Everywhere you go, you hear it, and you see it. It's coming at you through your phone, your tablet, and your computer. It's broadcast from your favorite radio station, TV networks, and cable companies. It's in the stadiums, the arenas, the ballparks. It screams for your attention at the mall. It's interactive on Main Street. It's even coming at you from the gas pump at the nearby convenience store. What is it? It's digital content. It's digital content. It's digital content. Somebody has to create it. Somebody has to manage it. So whether your dream is to write it, design it, create it, call it, produce it, voice it, host it, light it, shoot it, switch it, record it, color correct it, Edit it, code it, repurpose it, tweet it, blog it, post it, compress it, upload it, replay it, or make sure it gets to where it's got to go when it's got to get there in the format it's got to be in. You need to attend Carolina School of Broadcasting. The skills you will learn, the experience you will get, and the connections you will make at Carolina School of Broadcasting will open the doors to the career you want in digital content creation and digital content management. Call or come by today. Click csbradiotv.edu. Parents, your son or daughter has had their license for a while now, but you want to make sure they're prepared for any situation they may face on the road. High school driver's ed doesn't teach them to drive defensively. They need to be prepared for any highway emergency. For less than a month's insurance, and a whole lot less, BSR instructors at Summit Point Motorsports Park in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, will teach your son or daughter how to respond instantly and positively to unexpected situations on the road. BSR's specialized accident avoidance training teaches swerve to avoid maneuvers at highway speed. Ocular driving, which focuses driving attention on ways to avoid accidents, vehicle dynamics and feedback, skid control, and skid recovery, threshold braking on straights and progressive braking on curves, and off-road recovery techniques. This is stuff driver's ed simply doesn't teach. So call BSR today, 304-725-8444. Give your kid the skill set needed to drive safely and responsibly on the highway. That's 304-725-8444. This is a test to find out if you know it all when it comes to children. Name one of the leading killers of U.S. children age 1 to 13. What's the best way to protect children in a car crash? At what age and size should a child start using a booster seat? Don't assume you know it all when it comes to car seats for your child. Go to safercar.gov slash the right seat and know for sure. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Hi, I'm Jesse Love, and you're listening to Race Chaser Radio. Now back to the show. Hey, we know that kid. We know that kid. In fact, his name is on our wall of fame. Back yeah. right behind you, Tom. Yep, Jesse Love. So he, The hammer. Yes, he's going to be making his Power Eye Midget debut in about a month and change. Yep. Six weeks, I guess. Yep. He so, is definitely going places. Yes. 
Toyota, going, let's go places. Yes, that's right. Well, at least <laughs> part of TRD. So exactly. That, uh, oh, works uh, so, out well. So before the break, I was talking about a $14.8 million condo that has a <laughs> giant 88 sculpture in homage to Dale Jr., this was broken by the Sports Business Journal earlier today. Thank you, Adam Stern, which, for giving which, me a talking point. Which, by yeah. the way, Jacob, it's turned backward. The 88. Yes, it yes. is turned backward, as a matter of fact, it's at least in the, in the picture. How can you tell? Because of the way the eights are oh, slanted. Yeah. Okay. It's the way yeah. the eights are slanted. Yes. Ran backward. See, Ran producer Randy and I, we, we know our 88s. Mm -hmm. Well, I wasn't looking at the picture. I was just yeah. asking you how well, you Listen, if I'm going to pony up $14 to say million, dollars, I want my eights to be right, okay? Right. <laughs> no crazy <laughs> they got to turn it back around. So exactly right. this, this got Dale Jr. talking on Twitter about the thing. He uh -oh. was rather shocked that somebody had a giant 88 in honor of him. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, according to Jr., he says, I texted Jimmy Johnson, and it's not his place, but it might be Jeff Gordon's, to which Jimmy Johnson just replied a few minutes ago, definitely Jeff Gordon's condo. <laughs> so if you, if you want Jeff Gordon's condo and you've got $15 million laying around somewhere, go for it. Go why, to Manhattan. Why would Jeff Gordon's condo have a, an 88 stuck up a 24? Well... If you remember, when Jeff came back out of retirement to fill in for Dale Jr., he drove the 88 for the last eight races of his career. Well, yeah, but would it mean that much to him that he would build a big sculpture for it? Or I don't know. Maybe I mean, somebody gifted it to him? It's better than a rainbow-colored 24. Well, I here. suppose. But if that's yeah. true, I would sure hate to find out how much the 24 statue is yeah, worth. Right? Really? Right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yep. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. Actually, I'm getting a look at the – here, I'll, I'll show Tom. I'm getting a look at the full picture now. There's your wow. giant granite 88. Yeah, there you got it. Yeah, right in the uh, main room. Well, we don't room have a Dale it. Jr. statue at our place. You but have a we car. have got a Dale Jr. Xfinity car, a great clips car, uh, in our new break room. It's uh, the Living the Dream Cafe, part of our uh, – new facility for epic that's our uh, classic car restoration okay. company that chip is rolling out yep. and in in the cafe is a dale jr xfinity car and the folks that come up to our car show on may the 18th will get to check it out awesome right. very well, nice he's he's gonna make me look really fast uh 2013 i know which car it was because he only ran Lake great clip sponsorship one time in his xfinity series career 2013 at chicagoland there you go dale jr was in that car so we've that got car, that car finished that car it's in our lunch room <laughs> he actually led two laps in that race and finished fifth shockingly not really because it's a bush series race kyle bush won <laughs> shocking <laughs> yeah maybe you can get that link and get it to Chris, and we'll let Chris get it, put it up on the Race Chaser Media Facebook page, and everybody can go check it out, the uh, condo. And if you want to see the car, Absolutely. we've got yeah. it. Yes, yeah. I was going to say, if you want to see the car. Yeah, if you want to see the car, May 18th, and that's going to be right that at. That is, uh, Chip bought the uh, Carolina Collector Auto Fest car show that had been in Raleigh for over 30 years, and we are rolling that out and rebranding it, and it'll be part of the Strut Masters portfolio uh, and that is at our new facility, which is the headquarters of Epic. That's our classic car restoration yep. company. And, we're, we, you know, we're working on chip stuff right now. And we're starting to get our customer cars in. And that's where we're going to have our car show. We expect to have two, 300 cars there or more. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun stuff to do. And the best part, guys, you know what? It's free. That's awesome. Yeah. So now, if you want to come check it out as a spectator, it's free. And you can display your car inside for twenty-five bucks, outside for ten bucks. You can't beat it, man. It's a great deal. That's out. That's uh, on All Star Race Day, I think. In I May. Got you. Um, well, we'll be wrapped up and done. They can hit the highway. And but that's what I was going to say. Yep. If you're coming through that's exactly uh, on your right. way from the north um, to to come through to Charlotte, that's right. You're in Roxborough. Yes. yes? The, the show, the uh, car show, will be uh, less than a mile from the Strut Masters facility. Okay. Brand new facility that yep. we're getting do all dialed up just for the car show. So you can stop by there in the morning and enjoy the car show, and then head exactly. rest of the way down to Charlotte. Be a lot of great food day. there and a lot of yep. fun. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Okay. Where are we going? Where are we going? Goodness. We're going to talk about uh, the upcoming race weekend at Phoenix, or what are we doing here? Heck, why not? Let's yeah. talk about Phoenix. Talk about Phoenix. Well, first thing ISM. I ISM. Yes, ISM Raceway. First thing I can talk to you about this weekend at ISM Raceway is that uh, 
Kyle Busch's sponsor is now sponsoring the Xfinity Series race. It will be the IK9 Service Dog 250. I got to tell you, I'm really impressed with IK9. They've come onto the scene in a big way this year and made a huge commitment to the sport, not only with uh, JGR, but now sponsoring the race. And um, I think it's really cool. That's a that's a neat organization. It was cool at Atlanta to be able to to see the uh, the the K9 dogs yes. that were that were there. Um, Definitely. I've had an experience with some of those animals close up. Uh, one of our good racing friends in southwestern Virginia, uh, Chubby Arrington, a lot of folks yeah. know Chubby. Yeah. He was the Dodge owner in NASCAR late models and the truck series for quite some time and had a who's who list of drivers that drove for him. But uh, Chubby has a service animal called Oreo, and Oreo was always a fan favorite when Chubby came to the racetrack. And Oreo uh, looks after Chubby because he has diabetes, like a lot of folks do. Oh, okay. And Chubby, uh, you know, that animal is so smart. If Chubby, it, it, his sugar is too low, that dog would not let him crank up the vehicle and take off. It's amazing how smart those animals are. Does it give him an Oreo cookie to raise the sugar level? <laughs> Perhaps. That's the dog's black problem. and white, just like an Oreo cookie. too many like, Oreo cookies. Yeah, but I've, I've seen those animals They uh, really, it's a, and it's amazing. Service dogs are amazing. It's, it's amazing, amazing what, what you can do. train a dog to be sensitive to. Whether you're, uh, I because I for a while I worked in a, in a pest control company. Right. And they had pest control sniffing dogs termite sniffing dogs and i mean train them for drugs train them for termites train them you know to be service oriented in that way diabetes kind of thing it's just amazing what you can train dogs to do well my dog was pretty smart but her best feat was probably finding the nearest kentucky fried chicken so i'll leave it at that <laughs> well eat more chicken i guess right okay so uh phoenix coming up this weekend and an opportunity for xfinity and cup to shine we have a slight modification to the package again yes well this is a kind good, of a short track this, yes this is a good modification though on all the short tracks that are not you know intermediate or anything like that um you've got 700 we bring the we open the tapered spacer up and bring it back to 750 horsepower and by the way no air ducts uh why no air duct? well i guess because the short you don't track. need you don't need the draft okay that's that's an interesting concept because I think I don't know I it makes me wonder about what we're going to see this weekend because I think Las Vegas was kind of what we expected um but I don't know if we're we're going to see a drastic change in the way the cars perform at 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 uh, ISM or not I mean you have to think that either way team Penske is still going to be the team to beat Yes. I don't know. Kevin Harvick is really, well, really stout is, there. Well, he is, but you know, Penske really stout started out place. so strong. I mean, good grief. I can't believe that uh, that Joey Logano and Brad Keselowski have been so good the last two weeks, and, and they're both always good at Phoenix. Yep. So you, Look out. you just have to think that it eventually um, – those are the guys you're going to have to beat. But the guy that I would 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 be curious about this weekend is actually their teammate, Ryan Blaney. Well. Because <laughs> he's the only one that hasn't uh, won yet out of the three, and he's been just as good. Yes. It's not – I'm not concerned about Ryan Blaney at this point. In fact, it, it, with the way this has been going, if I'm Team Penske – I'm now I'm now looking at this going, okay, how can we get Ryan Blaney to victory lane quickly? Yeah. And I, I believe the faster you get all three of those guys one victory apiece and into the playoffs, then the more risks you can take. And Boy. a Team Penske team that's able to take risks and go after it when they have two, three of the best strategic crew chiefs in the entire garage area in Paul Wolf, um, Todd Gordon, and Jeremy Bullens. That's a terrifying thought and for the rest of the field. That gives you all season to experiment and monkey around with stuff. Figure you know, out to what's going to Get ready work. for the yep. Check, yep. for the playoffs. You know, yep. that's the real advantage. You know, once you're you locked in, you that. can pretty much do whatever you want. You but know? how scary is it that we've we've gone through three races and we had, of course, Denny Hamlin winning at, at Daytona. Daytona, yeah. But then we had two Penske cars. If if we ever get Blaney, even if it's you know the next two to three races, we get all three of them in the playoffs before hardly anyone else is in the playoffs. Uh -huh. You know how deflating that is. One organization uh -huh. has got all their cars 
cars in in the first, you know, handful or, or whatever number of races. Um, Justin Sullivan from our chat. Hopefully, RCR has a better day. RCR is kind of a mystery. You would have thought they've had after speed. their qualifying. Yeah, you would have they've thought fast, they yeah. would have would have done really really well um, the last couple of weeks, and it just racing wise it just had yeah. hasn't happened i think that's there's something they've got speed like you said they just haven't been able to to, to take that in the race trim um and i'd really like to see that for both daniel and austin um you just have to wait and see i guess but if i'm not if i'm not betting on penske you have to look at kevin harvick as you said randy because he's about owned that place but I feel like his advantage has sort of gone away just a little bit over the last <laughs> well, you know, couple and you of know, races. A track like Phoenix, the way it's configured, is going to play right in the hands of, of some wheelmen, some guys that people may not be keeping an eye on, but a guy like Ryan Priest, a guy like Daniel Hemrick, you know, those two guys are just good young wheelmen. And if there is a place where, where the driver can make enough difference, to me, it's a place like Phoenix or whatever they call it. Make now. a good point because with the track reconfigured, we can throw everything out, exactly. basically. Because yeah. it's going to be well, a completely we, different but, track. Well, no, but the track was reconfigured for both races last year. So we've already had. Oh, that's had, right. Yeah, we've already done. Yeah, we've, that we've, already, yeah. we've already had a year under that's our right. belt to know yeah. what's going to happen. And everybody hates when I play with numbers. But I'm sorry, Phoenix is a place where you can play with numbers. Since 2012. That's the last, oh, I don't know, seven years worth, so 14 races. In the last 14 races at Phoenix, Kevin Harvick has exactly one finish outside the top 10. He finished 13th in the, in the first race at Phoenix no surprise. in 2013. Other than that, in that span, he's finished first, 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 second, fourth, sixth, fifth, first and fifth exactly you you made my case for me case closed kevin harvick yes until kevin harvick actually gets beat on sunday he is the favorite period bar none and in five of those victories he led 140 laps or more and he led at least 40 laps in both races last year and one in the spring hmm. well i mean again you can spend the numbers any way you want you still got to go around the races so um, Harvick has certainly had the best average finish, and he's he's won more than his share the last you know several years. But I'm not going into this thinking that Kevin Harvick runs away. Too much is different this year, and too many faces in different places. I think he's not saying he won't win, just saying I don't think it's a lock. Yeah, there's no point. there's there's no drafting this week. This is a short track. Let's yeah. be clear on that. It's yes. not last week where you can suck up on somebody and try to make a move. This is back to the traditional short track. You have to bump somebody or dive underneath them to make passes here at ISM Raceway. You, you got to believe Kyle Busch will be a factor. There Kyle Busch will be a factor. He's just a such a wheel factor. man, and and you know when you get into a track that size, I mean it's just right. I think up JGR his alley. in general is going to be a factor this weekend because Denny's running well. Yes. Kyle's obviously running well, and you certainly would have to think that uh, Martin Truex is going to be in this too. And Martin yes. is probably as angry as anybody. Right oh, now. absolutely. So. Kyle won the fall race. We'll talk more about Martin coming up in the show. Right now, we're going to step away. When we return. We'll continue getting madder. Why? Because it's Motorsports Madness. We're back after this. When do you think of a plumber? Like most people, even if it's an emergency, you can be confident about who will arrive to help you. For quality and reliability, count on someone you can trust. Call on the plumbing services of Hague Quality Water of Maryland. Plumbing doesn't have to be an emergency. We handle all kinds of preventative maintenance, too. Hague Quality Water of Maryland is family-owned here in Annapolis since 1993. For a refreshing choice, call us at 888-84-WATER or visit us online. Here at Lewis Meineke, we're more than just your average car care center. Hey, it's Dave, your neighbor from Lewis Meineke. Whether you need an oil change, brakes, tires, or anything under the hood, we've got you covered. Take advantage of our free check engine light service as well. Yes, free. And don't forget about our free shuttle service. Never stress, we'll take care of the rest. On with life. Give us a call at Lewis Meineke, 302-827-2054. Is your job sucking the life out of you? Wake up. You can do something else. Information technology. I know what you're thinking, but I'm not a math and science person. No problem and no excuses. 
because it's not rocket science. It's My Computer Career. Go to mycomputercareer.edu and take the free career evaluation today. You can start your new life as an IT pro in as little as four months. Mycomputercareer.edu. That's mycomputercareer.edu. Do you love the sound of high revving motors and the smell of burning rubber? Do you want to get your car sideways right at the ragged edge of control? If you've always wanted to try drifting or learn to improve your drifting skills, Summit Point Motorsports Park, the Mid-Atlantic's premier motorsports facility, has the expert instructors and the specialized track to teach you how to drift and the skills necessary to drift competitively. From skid pad to open sessions, Summit Point Motorsports Park has the safe and open environment that allows drifters of all skill levels new to intermediate to get sideways and smoking. With a focus on safety and the skill set necessary to drift competitively, Summit Point Motorsports Park's Drift Nirvana is just the thing for you. Call for your reservation today, 304-725-8444. Or for more information, go online, summitpoint-raceway.com, or you can email them at office at bsrinc.com. Drift Nirvana, getting you sideways the right way. If you own a gun, you have a full-time responsibility. When you aren't using it, be sure it can't get into the hands of curious children, troubled teenagers, a thief, or anyone else who might misuse it. Your family, friends, and neighbors are all counting on you. Remember, always lock it up. For more information on firearm storage safety, visit ncpc.org. This message brought to you by the National Crime Prevention Council, the Bureau of Justice Assistance, and the Ag Council. Hi, I'm Riley Herbst, and you're listening to Race Talk on PMN, the Performance Motorsports Network. Somehow that music is just... Absolutely, Riley. I know. I know. I know. It's sort of that techno. I don't Te- know. Techno geeky kind yeah. of wonky. Right, Riley's wonky. 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 It's Riley's the fun. word of the day. Wonky. Jacob Seelman, Tom Baker, Randy Pettit on this edition of Motorsports Madness. And hey, hey, Tom, I got a question for yeah, you. Yeah. Okay. So What's there's the been all this talk, especially with Kurt Busch in the last couple of weeks, having them as a sponsor about cybersecurity jobs. And I want to know, how can I get one of those? Oh, that's easy. Well, for, well you got to have some training first. Okay. So how would I get that training? Well, here's what you do. You go to mycomputercareer.edu, and then what you do is take their free career evaluation because mycomputercareer.edu can help you to become an IT professional in as little as four months. Just four months. Don't even have to do it full time. You can do it two to three days a week either online or at one of their seven campuses across the country. And Jacob's right. There are about 2 million unfilled cybersecurity jobs right now in the U.S. And you could fill one of them with training from My Computer Career. If you're not good at math and science, it doesn't matter. This isn't rocket science. It's My Computer Career. Just check them out. Financing is available if you are eligible, including the GI Bill, And they work with hundreds of employers, so there's a good chance that you'll get placed in a position appropriate to your field right out of your training. So go see the folks at mycomputercareer.edu online. It's training for a better life, and you can be an IT professional as little as just four months, and that, Jacob, is how you, you become a cybersecurity professional. Fantastic. Yes. I feel better already. There you go. (laughs) So, guess what's coming up on this show, Tom? Hopefully race talk. Yes, more race talk coming up in the second half of this program. Coming up in just a few minutes, we're going to be joined by Joey Tanner out of the NASCAR K&M Pro Series West, who finished third in that division season opener at the dirt track at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Much more successful dirt race for the K&M West this year than uh, than last year. Fixed a lot of the problems, and I was really impressed with the competition level. We'll talk to Joey about his experience there. Coming up in the second half of our show, more race talk, more news, some IndyCar conversation. But first, we're going to do a little business, and we'll be back with more Motorsports Madness in just a moment. Stick around. We're growing like crazy and need account reps who know their way around agencies, the internet, and social media. Got connections? Or do you know how to get to the decision makers? Are you fearless? We need you. 
internet radio, or as we call it, wireless mobile radio, is rapidly becoming the place to be with almost limitless income potential. So contact us to get involved with the fastest growing professionally produced group of internet radio stations in the world. Your imagination is the only limit here. Call 717-749-0444. That's 717-749-0444. Or you can email us at scorpionradiogroup at gmail.com. You want to ask for Sue. Okay, so Sarah, I'm dropping you off at Emily's? Yep. And Josh, you're going to? Soccer, Dad. Soccer practice. Right. Oh, by the way, I just wanted to let you know when I pick you both up, I'll be wearing my short shorts. What? No! Yep, and my dorky dad hat, and I'm gonna do my dad dance for all your friends. They'll love it! Seriously? Why? Because I like my short shorts. Of course, I could be talked out of it if you guys would just buckle up your seatbelts without giving me a hard time. It's important to get your kids to buckle up for safety, no matter what it takes. And sometimes, all it takes is your parental powers of persuasion. Okay, okay, we're buckling up. See, all buckled. Good choice. I'll just have to do my dad dance at dinner time. What, what? No! Do what you have to to make sure your kids are wearing their seatbelts, even on short drives. Never give up until they buckle up. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Visit safercar.gov slash kidsbuckleup for more information. Strutmasters.com is the proud sponsor of NHRA top fuel driver Clay Milliken. If you own a luxury car or SUV, eventually your high-tech suspension system is going to fail. And when it happens, call or click strutmasters.com for an American-made suspension conversion system that solves the problem for a fraction of what you'd pay at the dealer. And the only thing faster than the service you'll get at strutmasters.com is Clay Milliken stomping on that loud pedal. Hi, I'm NASCAR driver William Byron. You're listening to Motorsports Madness on PMN, the Performance Motorsports Network. Welcome back to Motorsports Madness. Jacob Zielman, Tom Baker, Randy Pettit continuing our conversation. And we're going to go ahead and uh, well, go to the strutmasters.com hotline very briefly and welcome in our next guest we got a short segment so we're gonna we're gonna hold him and we're gonna have the expansive conversation after our next break but we at least want to uh, acknowledge and welcome joey tanner to the program tonight uh, fresh off a third place run with jefferson pitts racing at the dirt track at las vegas joey we're glad to have you on the hotline with us this evening yeah thanks for having me been a lot of fun to uh, to watch, and uh, we've got a quick minute here during this segment. So uh, just for for a moment here, talk about your experience at the dirt track at Vegas. It looked like a fun race for you guys. Oh yeah, it was a great time. I mean, I've never that was my first start in a K and N car um, of my career, so it was a a little bit different. You know, I've also you know I've grown up around the dirt. I've been racing dirt late models since I was fourteen, but. You know, I didn't. I didn't know what to expect with those heavy cars, the dirt track. But it was a, uh, it was a lot of fun. The track prep was uh, a lot better this year uh, compared to last year, and the, and the racing was a little better. Um, you know, put out for good racing for the fans, and cars were able to move around the track. And we had a great time. I had a great time, and we had a good finish. It wasn't really, we didn't really get a good starting spot <laughs> because of the heat race incident. But um, you know, the overall, the overall trip and the overall experience was was just second to none i can't wait to talk to you about that finish brother that was one more exciting race good job finishing i was gonna third, say dude. he he had a he had a front row Certainly seat did. Tom, did. for yeah. that finish i can't uh, wait to hear his so, perspective on it and we will get joey's perspective on that finish coming up here we got about 30 seconds tom i know joey kind of echoed what i felt like did did you feel like it was a much better product than last year oh by a ton i think the the idea of pairing that with the world of outlaws and doing it at the same time was absolutely perfect. The track conditions were way better mm -hmm. than last year. Oh, no. The, the uh, uh, track conditions, track prep was, was great. It was a great show, I felt like. And uh, as, uh, as Randy Pettit just mentioned, we're going to hear from Joey because he did have a front row seat to the last lap duel between Haley Deegan and Jagger Jones coming up during our next segment. Right now, though, you're going to get these words, and we'll have more with NASCAR K&M Pro Series West driver Joey Tanner right after this. 
You own a performance car and you know how to drive, but you want to learn real performance driving. Well, Bunky, get that car off the street and onto the track. Summit Point Motorsports Park, the Mid-Atlantic's premier road racing facility, located just over an hour from D.C. in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, is the place to go. And you'll find that Friday at the track is going to give you what you need. For less than a monthly car payment, you can attend this regularly scheduled one-day instructional event in your street car on one of Summit Point's three world-class road racing circuits. You'll receive classroom instruction, skid pad instruction in their cars, including front and rear skid control, and four 20-minute in-your-car instructional sessions from a professional instructor. Have fun, go fast, and really learn how to drive. Call 304-725-8444 for class schedules and details. That's 304-725-8444. Friday at the track at Summit Point Motorsports Park. Is your job sucking the life out of you? Wake up. You can do something else. Information technology. I know what you're thinking, but I'm not a math and science person. No problem and no excuses. Because it's not rocket science. It's My Computer Career. Go to mycomputercareer.edu and take the free career evaluation today. You can start your new life as an IT pro in as little as four months. Mycomputercareer.edu. That's mycomputercareer.edu. The Performance Motorsports Network is a compilation of shows about motorsports. From technical to controversial to just fun, everything you like about racing and gearhead stuff is right here on one internet channel. The Performance Motorsports Network. Tell your friends about it. Hi, I'm Reed Sorensen. Racing has been a part of me and my family for as long as I can remember. I had to make tough choices early on to get to the top. It took hard work and dedication, but it's those tough choices that helped me prepare for challenges I would face as a cup driver. Make the right choices today and be ready for the challenges tomorrow. This message is brought to you by the U.S. Air Force. Hi, I'm Todd Gilland, and you're listening to Race Talk on PMN, the Performance Motorsports Network. A Gilliland bringing us back from break lets me note that uh, the Gilliland team, i.e. DGR Crosley, which is co-owned by Todd's dad, is debuting Tanner Gray in the Arca Menards series this weekend at Five Flags Speedway. We can, t- we can talk about the Arca race a little bit later right now. Jacob Seelman, Tom Baker, and Randy Pettit on the program talking motorsports and we have on the hotline with us joey tanner from the nascar k&m pro series west who was regaling us a little bit uh, prior to the break about his uh, his view on the dirt track at las vegas and his experience which i think we're all in agreement it was uh, certainly a great show joey what was your view now on that last lap? Because you were you finished third right behind a duo in Jagger Jones and uh, Haley Deegan that uh, went at it just in front of you there at the very tail end. Yeah, it was uh, it was a crazy to watch. I mean, and the fact that Haley and I were able to even make up that much distance on Jagger was it was crazy to even think of because we, we she got into second, I got into third with like you know 15 laps to go, but. Uh, you know, I could see it coming. I saw the lap cars uh, starting to file in, and, and the leader was catching them. And I just – I didn't think Haley was going to have a shot at him. And when she got to him, uh, you know, it was, the rest was history from there. But, I, you know, from my standpoint, I kind of let off a little bit and gave myself some distance just in case they roughed each other up and uh, took each other out. Because, you know, on dirt, I mean, you guys know, you watch it, you, you can see the cars move. There's not a lot of uh, reaction time with those heavy cars on a dirt track. So when something happens, you don't have a lot of time to think or a lot of places to go. So uh, it was an interesting race. It was a fun race to watch, for sure. You got to be ready to pounce, man. It looks like you were. You just didn't get the opening you were looking for. No, I, you know, I was telling the team, Jefferson Pitts, uh, <clears throat> after the race, I should have just been a little more aggressive. You know, starting that deep in the race, uh, 15th, get to the front. I was trying to take the time, take my time and keep the car in one piece and, and have something for the end. But unfortunately, there was no yellows at the end and to help us out. But, you know, we got we got the job done keeping the car in one piece. But unfortunately, we weren't able to finish the deal and win the race. But so, Joey, for those, win them all. I was in, for those for those who 
are maybe less familiar with your background. Talk a little bit about how you've gotten to this point and then how you got connected with Jefferson Pitts to run the dirt race last week. Yeah, I've been racing dirt late models since I was 15 years old. We've been traveling uh, all across the Northwest region and uh, we've done, we travel across the nation uh, sometimes when I was younger. And uh, so I've been doing the dirt late model thing. I met Jeff Jefferson when I was a young boy racing in the Northwest tour and the Winston West, my dad, Jody Tanner, used to race with them. So uh, we knew each other, and I raced pavement for a year and a half and won the fall classic at Yakima Speedway. And that's uh, Jeff actually approached me after that and asked me to run for them at Gene Price Motorsports when he was running, when he was working with Gene Price. And we weren't able to get it done, you know, back then. But <clears throat> this uh, deal came up with the, tr uh, with the dirt track after watching the first race. I had, a, you know, my, my family here and – and a longtime supporter, Rick Saran of Eastside Paving, wanted me, uh, thought it would be a good idea if we got our hands on that, on a ride for the next race. And lo and behold, they were racing there with the World of Outlaws uh, Cup weekend. So uh, being there with the Outlaws, we thought that the track would be a little bit better shape. The Outlaws could have blew it off, blew, could blow it off and make it a two-lane racetrack. And we were right. They did. They, uh, they certainly, the track prep was good. The track was way better than the first race. And it was a, it was a good investment and it was a good show. Now, it's funny that I, I sit here and I th Tom was going to shake his head, I think, a minute ago when, when, when you were talking about uh, back when you were a young boy. But you're, you're not necessarily one of the young guns on the, the West Tour now when you consider there's guys like Jagger and Derek Krause there. You're, I think, what, 28 or 29 now? Yeah, I'm 29 now. So that that's got that's got to feel a little bit different, doesn't it? That at one time you might have been considered one of the younger guys on tour, but you're coming into it at a time when there's some drivers that are you know close to half your age running the K&M West. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's crazy to think that um, when I was their age, 16 and and 17 and 18, they weren't even letting kids run that series at that age. You had to be 18 to run the NASCAR uh, k and Pro Series and to run majority of NASCAR divisions when I, was, when I was that age growing up. But now that they changed these rules and letting the kids start younger, which I think is great for the experience, um, yeah, it's crazy to think. I mean, I still think I've <clears throat> got a lot of good years left and I'm not that old, but when you go to a race and you see you these 16-year-olds and 17-year-olds and 18-year-olds just running up front and being aggressive and, and keeping lines and, and doing all the right things with uh, – self-marketing, self-promotion, and, and, and their driving abilities. It's, it's crazy to think that how far NASCAR's come and how much everything's changed in just a matter of, you know, eight years. The interesting thing about your situation going into that race, though, was because it was a dirt race, even though you were considerably older than a lot of probably the other drivers that were entered in that event, um, you have way more dirt experience than a lot of them. So the experience kind of canceled out. Um, the age in this case, and you were able to have quite a drive. Talk about the weekend for just a little bit and give us a quick overview because you kind of overcame some challenges early on on Wednesday to um, to get to the point where you could run well on Thursday. Yeah, like you said, we did have a lot of uh, obstacles to go through on on Wednesday night practice. We ripped the nose off the car the first two sessions, so, I mean, we – I think we put down a total of seven laps, um, and, you know, four of them were maybe up to speed. So um, we didn't really get a whole lot of practice in on, on Wednesday. We, we hit the last two sessions kind of hard, but, you know, those, were, those last two sessions were the, were the sessions that we actually had to make some changes on the car and try to better it. But, um, yeah, our time was limited uh, because of those first two sessions. But, you know, we didn't know how the track was going to be. It was bumpy on Wednesday a little bit, getting into turn one. Cars were bottoming out left and right, and – and that's the thing about dirt. You just never know what kind of surface you're going to get. You could get a, yep. a sticky surface, a rough surface, or a slick surface that's smooth. You just never know. And uh, we definitely weren't prepared for that. So, Joey, just out of curiosity, obviously, with your background, it made sense to come run the the dirt track at Vegas. But would would there be a scenario where if you could get the right sponsor support behind you, you know, maybe not this year, but, so, you know, still in the future, like you said, you've got some time left in your career that you would consider, you know, maybe making a run at the West title? Absolutely. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we just uh, confirmed yesterday I'm going to be racing at Irwindale uh, March 30th with Jefferson Pitts. We're going to 
keep it going. Um, I, you know, we didn't do the dirt track in particular because we thought it was more in my wheelhouse. Cause I think that I'm better on asphalt. Uh, personally, I just, you know, I just haven't had the, the situation or circumstances to run it full time here in the West coast. And now that after this, that race at Vegas has kind of opened up some opportunities for myself and the team of Jefferson Pitts to kind of work together uh, a, a little bit more. So we're going to take it one step at a time. I'm, I'm looking for sponsors right now. I would love to run for a K&N championship this year. I think the team is definitely capable. I think I'm capable of it now. Um, you know, given, given how, how many years I've been racing and the knowledge that I've, I've gained over the years, I've been a sponge of the sport mm. and, you know, we're going to, we're going to do our best to even try to run for it this year. Brother, I think you proved to everybody. You're certainly a wheel man. And, you know, when I think of the Pacific Northwest, I think of two guys from that area that made it all the way to the bigs. Uh, the first one was Derek Cope. Mm -hmm. You know, I can still yep. remember mm -hmm. when Derek upset the world and won the uh, Daytona 500 and then had everybody covered at Dover. And, of course, Greg Biffle uh, from that area. Yep. So uh, there's a lot of good racers in, in the Pacific Northwest. Talk a little bit about the, the local yeah. racing scene up there. How is racing still uh, still pretty strong up that way? Yeah, racing is very strong. And it's, you know, Biffle and uh, – the blisses and the copes um all those guys that made it up to the the top levels from the northwest it was a different time and now it's it's kind of tough out here in the northwest there's a lot of great race car drivers and the racing out here is really tough um but we are in the northwest and in oregon and washington and california oregon and washington more so that the 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 noted the notoriety and the publicity and um just everything about it for national recognition is kind of on a lower scale because of where we're at right. and it's tough to get your name out there i mean if you get your name out there you got to travel across the country to go to north carolina or the midwest to to get into these uh top level uh divisions and it's tough to do that without a lot of marketing out here it's tough to because you got to reach out to across you got to reach out all across the united states no for, for help yeah and it's uh it makes it tough out here and there's uh there's been a lot of great race car drivers out here that I think are definitely capable of racing at that level um, of the NASCAR divisions, whether it's K&N trucks or even in a super late model division in the past, in the past series or even national dirt late model uh, series. Um, but it's just a tough market out here. And that's just a uh, plain and simple fact about it. We're going to ask Joey to hang on with us. We're going to step aside and have more right after this. Parents, your son or daughter has had their license for a while now, but you want to make sure they're prepared for any situation they may face on the road. High school driver's ed doesn't teach them to drive defensively. They need to be prepared for any highway emergency. For less than a month's insurance, and a whole lot less, BSR instructors at Summit Point Motorsports Park in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, will teach your son or daughter how to respond instantly and positively to unexpected situations on the road. BSR's specialized accident avoidance training teaches swerve to avoid maneuvers at highway speed. Ocular driving, which focuses driving attention on ways to avoid accidents, vehicle dynamics and feedback, skid control, and skid recovery, threshold braking on straights and progressive braking on curves, and off-road recovery techniques. This is stuff driver's ed simply doesn't teach. So call BSR today, 304-725-8444. Give your kid the skill set needed to drive safely and responsibly on the highway. That's 304-725-8444. <laughs> You hear that? That's the sound of America's only sports car. That's right. It's a Corvette. But not just any Corvette. It's your Corvette. It's that who cares if there's traffic part of your day. And this could be you when you come to Cooper Corvettes. With 60 years of Corvettes to choose from, there's always a Corvette in your budget. And they'll service any Corvette you bring in. Cooper Corvettes. On Route 1 just north of Quantico and Triangle. Call, click, or visit coopercorvettes.com. HMS Motorsport is the leader in motorsport safety. HMS serves the majority of Monster Energy NASCAR Cup, Xfinity, Camping World Truck, IndyCar, and IMSA WeatherTech teams, as well as countless SCCA and club-level racers and driving enthusiasts throughout North America. Featuring world-renowned brands like Schubert Helmets, Schroep Belts, Adidas Suits and Shoes, Lifeline Fire Systems, and even Racecom Radio Kits, HMS has the right product for your type of racing and your budget. Their representatives are experts on only one thing, making your track driving as safe as possible. 
With locations in Mooresville, North Carolina and Danvers, Massachusetts, the HMS staff is always ready to take the time to help you find the right product for your safety needs. Don't settle for second when it comes to motorsport safety. Stop in to HMS Motorsport. Visit them on their website at hmsmotorsport.com or send them a message on Facebook and tell them the folks from PMN Radio sent you. Hi, this is John Andrasik of Five for Fighting, here for RAD, the entertainment industry's voice for road safety. You know, style is a personal thing, and your lifestyle is your business. But if you take it on the road, it becomes everybody's business. So please, plan ahead, designate before you celebrate. Friends, don't let friends drive drunk. A public service announcement brought to you by RAD, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. Hi, I'm Cody Connor, and you're listening to Race Chaser Radio. Now back to the show. If Cody Connor's listening to this show right now, he's probably really happy with that choice, knowing Cody like we do. Uh, welcome back to Motorsports Madness. Jacob Seelman, Tom Baker, Randy Pettit still with you on a Thursday night talking racing. And I believe right before the break, we had a chat question come in well, for our guest. Well, the question was a comment, a comment? Uh, for, for Joey. Uh, your, your, your friend, Joe Waters, called you an old man, Joey. I just want you to know that. With friends like him, who needs enemies, right? <laughs> Right. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Ricky Rayburn also uh, sending you some love in here. Uh, says he's very proud of you. So um, Northwest being uh, represented well here in our chat tonight on Facebook Live. We really appreciate that, and uh, good to have you with us as well, Joey. Yeah, I want to. Go so going back to a conversation uh, at, that as Joey dropped, he's going to go to Irwindale. Uh, you're, obviously, your background's been on the dirt more recently, Joey, but I'm curious what your thoughts going to Irwindale about the track and, and you know what your chances are going into that race at the end of the month because you, sa- you sound really optimistic right now, and obviously Jefferson Pitts has the track record at Irwindale. Yeah, no, I'm really excited. I actually raced at Irwindale on the Toyota Showdown in 2008 and 2009. That was, in 2008, that was my first asphalt start. Um, and we did really good. It was the year that we had all the rain, and we started, I want to say, 41st because they started us off till draw, and we made it up to ninth with only 30 laps of green. Sweet. Um, and sh- with a rain shortened race. So, and then we went back the year after for the super late models and qualified third, and ended up getting uh, taken out on a restart. But, I mean, I have experience at Irwindale. I've tested there. Um, you know, I've had I've had my experience on asphalt just because we haven't only really raced a year and a half. I mean, we. The car control, I can, I learn a lot from dirt. You learn a lot from dirt about car control and throttle control, racing on the slick track oh, yeah, and in the different kind of race tracks. So being able to handle a car a little bit different than some people aren't used to, um, I think really helps me. And it's been a while since I've been on asphalt, but um, I'm really excited. I, I mean, I can't even ex- explain to you how excited we are about this opportunity to uh, go out and show show the world what we can do again, um, make it show us that it wasn't a fluke with the third place finish at vegas but i think this is uh with jefferson pitts i mean i have such a good good relationship with jerry and jeff and we communicate so well and everything went so smooth in vegas considering with all the obstacles we had to we had to go through um, yeah. we're beyond excited and we know i think we got a good shot and you know i our communication like i said was really well so getting the car dialed and i think will be a little bit easier than the norm so i'm really looking forward to it yeah when i talked with jerry he was really pleased with how well that you did there um in that race of course having the dirt experience but he really felt like that you did a very methodical job and took care of the race car and coming up through the field and that that had to be a challenge because i'm sure that that car was much different to drive and to handle on dirt than what you're used to with your late model Oh, yeah, it's not even close to the same. I mean, those cars are, you know, 3,000 pounds, and what I race is 2,300 pounds, anywhere from 600 to 850 horsepower, and the, and the, and the chassis move. So uh, those West cars, they don't really move. So it's like driving a, a really – it's like driving a boat on a dirt track compared to what I'm driving. It's like driving a tank. Yeah, it's like driving a tank, man. It's, yeah. 
That's what Tyler Dipple said. It's not said an easy job to do. Same thing. Yeah, Tyler Dipple, when he ran Arca, said it was like driving the tank around the track. Yep. Yeah, that's exactly what he said. So uh, before we let you go, we know that you've had the number of people that have helped you not just put this K&N deal together, but, you know, in your other racing as well. So uh, a chance to give a shout out to your sponsors. Yeah, absolutely. I got to thank my family, my mom and my dad, uh, first off, for, you know, getting me into the sport and actually helping me get to this point. I got to thank Eastside Paving, Rick Saran. He's the one that's uh, making this all happen for, you know, the dirt track in Vegas and, and for Irwindale. So without those two, the big ones, uh, I got to thank uh, X Factor Race Cars, Commercial Industrial Auctioneers, MS Shock Therapy, um, Go Plumbing, uh, Everybody that supports me here on the on the Dirt Late Model deal, I got so much support with with fans and friends uh, from the Northwest. It's been uh, overwhelming and it, it's, it's been humbling to to hear all the the nice things people have said about me or said to me and and trying to help me out further this career with the K N series. So uh, without all their support and all the help from fans and friends, I mean, they're getting me there and this is uh, they're definitely helping out. So I appreciate it uh, in more ways than one. Well, we certainly appreciate the opportunity to chat with you, Joey, and uh, introduce you to our worldwide audience. And we hope that this won't be the last time we'll have you on the show. We we definitely would like to talk with you more as the season goes on. And uh, certainly, if you can go and run top five say, well, with Irwindale. Hang on a minute. I got a better idea. Go win Irwindale. Yeah, go win Irwindale and go. run top five. We'll get you back on again. That's the plan. We're going to go there and win that race. Well, we're definitely uh, excited to see you go give it a shot. So, uh, again, thanks for your time, Joey, and congratulations on a fantastic run at Vegas. That was awesome. Thank you, guys. I appreciate your time. That's Joey Tanner. Yes, it was, and we look forward to seeing him get back on track at the end of the month at Irwindale Speedway and Event Center for round number two of the NASCAR K&M Pro Series. And he may West. go out there and put a whooping on those teenagers, he man. Just may. You know, he just That guy's a wheel man. You he know, really it, is. It, it brings me back to last season. Remember at the start of the year, we, you know, we were talking about Tyler Ankrum ending up in a points position where – you know, they took it race to race at the start, but as it got deeper into the season and they kept sitting in a position where they could run for the championship, that they, they kept going and ultimately it turned into four wins and a championship that they never expected to have, Tom. And I can't help but think that, you know, should JPR and Joey be able to play their cards right, we might not be able to see a slightly similar run in this case. And I would almost call that a, a David versus Goliath story in a way because you talk about the two superpowers in the West being Bob Brunkati and Bill McAnally. Jefferson Pitts Racing has a lot of the people that were a part of the former superpower team, Gene Price Motorsports. But, you know, I, I would almost call them an underdog at this point. You know, I don't know if I totally agree with that, but I do understand where you're coming from because Bill McAnally obviously just has pretty much owned everything, yeah. you know, in recent times. But, you know, JPR, I think, is in a good position right now, um, you know, along with uh, the Sunrise Ford team. I just think this year has the chance to be a very intriguing year it does. just with who's driving so. for who and where and, and how. I, I just feel like the West is going to be a little more even handed. And, and I think that's going to be fun. But of course, you know, you, you've got Haley Deegan, you've got Derek Krause. I mean, those, you know, those two are a, a tough combination. And Haley is just, mm -hmm. he, she is just leaps and bounds. Every time she gets in a car, she's better than the last time she got in a car. And, you know, I know this was a dirt race, but that was still a racing yep. move that won her the race. And she Absolutely. is not shy. I think I think no. Haley's going to have a fun year. Well, and, and let's talk a little bit about the news that came out for Haley sure. over the weekend. And we can talk about uh, the, some news for Derek as well. Uh, Haley announcing uh, last weekend that she is going to have a uh, – Seven race arc or seven race deal with Venturini Motorsports. Say. Six in ARCA and one race in the NASCAR K and N Pro Series, uh, the East Race at Bristol coming up in August. That Haley's going to run, but she'll have six ARCA races starting at Toledo in May as part of the next progression of her career. And and uh, Mitch Covington from Monster Energy also announcing this week that they are going to be continuing to back her. As she climbs the ladder, which I know is a big vote of confidence sure. and a big vote of support for and Haley. And that's going to that's gonna put her in some really good equipment where the whole world yes. can really see what she can do at that yep. level. 
And I don't think it's going to be any shocker if she if she rings the bell in one of those races. To now, well, I, she's already run, what, two? Two, K yeah. And West. yeah. yeah. One, exactly. one late Only the Arca and races West. would not surprise me. No. And, and you know, since either. Danica's left the sport, you know, I think it's critical that we get uh, another, not only just another female driver, but a good lady See, driver. See, that's my you whole know, take on this. Not just being a woman, but right. being a good driver. And she fits, she checks both boxes. I she's really good, and she's very marketable, too. I don't too. think yeah. we should be trying to make a good female driver. I don't think it should be as if it's a requirement that we have a female driver in NASCAR. I think we need drivers who are talented, and if one of them happens to be female, so be it. So much the better. And and I think Haley Deegan is start, is proving that she mm -hmm. may be that driver. Uh, you know, Janet Guthrie was always a talented racer who never had winning equipment. Correct. And I think she is still the bellwether as far as NASCAR. With no disrespect meant to Danica, Janet had talent, and I think Haley may have that kind of talent as well. And it's it, she's yes. going to work hard to get where she she, is. she goes. Uh, and that's what she's I've not been just told. A pretty face. Uh, that's what I've been told by every team she's driven for so far in in stock car racing yep. that her work ethic is absolutely an indicator of her passion and how hard she wants absolutely. to get to the top level of a sport. And I think that's a very big thing. I've been very impressed, not just by her driving talent, but her presence within the sport. She's done very well in some of the, the web and TV appearances that she's done as part of NASCAR Next over the last year. And I think that's a big thing. In the last minute that we've got before this break, I want to add in a tidbit of news about her Bill McAnally Racing teammate, Derek, Derek Krause, Krause yeah. that I actually uh, was fortunate to break this week. Derek going to be running four truck races for Bill McAnally Sweet. Racing this season with Enios Motor Oil and uh, Napa Filters, Napa Auto Parts as primary sponsors for those four races. They're going to kick off the association coming up at Martinsville Speedway in two weeks' time. He'll also run at Dover in May and then a pair of Truck Series playoff races at Las Vegas once he turns 18 and at ISM Raceway in Arizona, where he had an incredible Truck Series debut last fall, ran in the top 10 almost all race long, came away with an eighth place finish. And that really, uh, Bill was telling me on the phone this week, that really was the catalyst to, uh, to make Good all of this possible. So great news for Derek, really excited for him, and uh, you know, looking forward to seeing what he can do and hopefully bettering that number just a little bit. With all that said, we're going to get ready to step aside and take a break when we return it's our uh, lightning round segment which is exciting you never know where we're going to go there more motorsports madness coming up right after this how to be a great dad in 15 seconds bike ride go fish walk in the park phone call milkshake play catch picnic fly a kite tell jokes laugh talk read a story tell a story bumper car swing set bowling pillow fight cut loose stay tight Whew. because the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life take time to be a dad today Call 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Automotive technicians and auto service trainees, how would you like to work at the beach and perform for one of the best car care centers in the nation? Lewis Meineke is now looking for skilled automotive technicians to join their award-winning team. If you're a gearhead that knows his or her stuff or a young up-and-comer that has the motivation and drive to succeed, then you need to make this call today, 302-827-2054. Lewis Meineke Car Care Center, located in beautiful Lewis, Delaware, offers a highly competitive compensation plan, great benefits, a flexible schedule, and did we mention that you're going to be working at the beach? Plus, there's a signing bonus for the right candidates. Technicians must be ASE certified and have a minimum of six years' experience. Beginners advance at your own pace in one of several entry-level positions. But whatever you do, don't wait. These jobs will go fast. Call Tim at 302-827-2054. That's 302-827-2054. Lewis Meineke Car Care Center. Rev up your career. <laughs> You hear that? That's the sound of America's only sports car. That's right. It's a Corvette. But not just any Corvette. It's your Corvette. It's that who cares if there's traffic part of your day. And this could be you when you come to Cooper Corvettes. With 60 years of Corvettes to choose from, there's always a Corvette in your budget. And they'll service any Corvette you bring in. Cooper Corvettes. On Route 1 just north of Quantico in Triangle. Call, click, or visit coopercorvettes.com. 
how to deal with someone who says that's so gay. Outsmart them. This party is, like, so gay. Totally. Excuse me, but did you ladies know the word gay used to mean happy or excited? Then it became a word used to describe gay people. Then somehow it came to mean dumb or stupid, which is how you just used it, which is not very nice. Ew, that guy is on the football team and super smart, and he totally hates us now. Totally. When you say that's so gay, do you realize what you say? Knock it off. Learn more at thinkbeforeyouspeak.com. Hi, I'm Zane Smith, and you're listening to Race Talk on the Performance Motorsports Network. Now back to the show. So I think we, we ought to congratulate Zane Smith on we his should. Xfinity Series debut over the weekend at Vegas because he ran a very clean race. If it wasn't for uh, some of the chaos right at the very end, I I believe Zane would have easily had a top 10 finish as it was. Uh, you know, he showed pace, he showed speed, and, and did a great job in his first start for Junior Motorsports. So. He really did, yeah. And, and we should also give props. We were talking about female racers. Natalie Decker did a really nice job also in, she in the uh, truck race. You I think know, she to, came home, what, 13th? 13th. And, and to be able to, to just have a nice steady run, she just needs laps. Mm-hmm. You know, and she got into, a, I think it was a Corvette maybe or a sports car of some type uh, here recently too. They've got her running some different things. And then she, I know she was fitted for an F3 as well. F- she's yes. running that. Yes. The F- so the F3 fitting is for the next round of the W series, yeah. which she's getting ready to, that'll be during the Martinsville truck and cup weekend coming up in a couple of weeks. So we'll wish Natalie the best of luck as she, uh, go, that's the final round of cuts, I believe for the W series before they whittle it down to the drivers who will take part in that series. So uh, good luck to Natalie for that coming up in a couple of weeks. And Tom, uh, it's not quite time for the 50th running of the NHRA Gator Nationals yet. That's, yet. A, that's a week away. Yeah. But in the meantime, we do know one very special patriotic tribute that's going to be happening during the Golden Gator Nationals, courtesy of one of your favorite people. Oh, yeah. There aren't many, there aren't many music stars or whatever that I really would go out of my way at this point in my life to have my picture taken with. But a few years ago at Charlotte, I made sure to get my picture taken. In fact, I think you took it, Jacob, yes, with Lee Greenwood. And Lee's going to be uh, performing God Bless the USA at the Gator Nationals. So, you know, wanted to uh, toss that out there. I, Lee is Lee, – that song is iconic, and the story behind it is uh, kind of crazy. It wasn't even expected – he didn't think it would be a hit. Wasn't supposed to be the first single, but the uh, I guess the record label or the manager, somebody decided, hey, let's put it out and look where it is now. It, yeah, it, and I hope uh, I hope all the folks going to the Gator Nationals will come by and check out uh, Clay Milliken and and uh, the Strutmasters.com Absolutely. Uh, Parts Plus Dragster. Uh, my boss Chip Lofton, who's watching tonight, he's going to be there, and uh, Strutmasters will be representing. And hope the fans will come by and. Uh, Check out Clay's Hot Rod. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, Clay's, yep. you know, Clay's, that the new paint scheme is fantastic it is. on Clay's it dragster. Really I cool. dig it. Um, yeah. But, you know, we, we love the Strutmasters program and the support they've given to the NHRA, obviously. Clay is certainly one of the bright personalities Agreed. of NHRA drag racing, and it's fun to have people like that in the sport. So we uh, definitely wish Clay the best of luck coming up at the golden anniversary of the Gator Nationals, yes, which, you know, how historic is it that that event's gotten to 50 years? Oh That's exciting. Uh, I feel old. Yeah, the unfin- It's almost as old as me. The unfinished business rounds of racing during you know the weekend are going to be fun where you get some of the legends of nhra drag racing racing against one another in identically prepared toyota camrys that big daddy don garlett shirley muldowney you know some of the legends of the sport in action next weekend making passes that's going to be fun that i i might be more excited about that than i am about the actual rounds of elimination on sunday after it's just always cool to exactly. see the legends in, and in a discipline game. i hope they've got good security on those cars but knowing some of those drivers they'll be out there in the parking lot trying to cheat them up uh, <laughs> probably <laughs> probably have to pry them out of them too yeah. exactly remember richard was it where was it darlington when petty they had the black flag petty off the track or was yes that? Exactly. no it, yeah it was darlington, darlington. last 
last yeah, September. Last year, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Petty's like, I just wanted to make one more laugh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the black flag. Exactly. I love it. So we're going into our lightning round, and I've got a couple of topics, but somebody brought this to my attention actually during our last break, and I wanted uh -oh. to mention this. The truck series is off this weekend, but we've had three races to really get a picture of of where things are at right now, and I just sit here in disbelief and, and kind of proud admiration when I'm looking down the Truck Series owner point standings. And yes, we know right now that Rowdy Nation is on top because Kyle Busch has won two times in three starts with the 51 team. But when you look back, you have Grant Enfinger second in owner points but leading the driver points with 117. And then third in owner points right now. And this is just further proof that the man is brilliant in anything he gets in right now. Third in owner points, ahead of the other two KBM trucks, all the Thor Sport trucks, both GMS trucks, is Ross Chastain and the Nice Motorsports 45 team. Go watermelon farmer. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I think that Ross is showing he had a, a great couple of races at Las Vegas. Um, ran well in the truck series, ran well in the Xfinity series. Yeah, top tens in both. both. You know, yeah. I mean, I think that Ross is more than proven that he deserves an opportunity in a winning cup car. And I'm keeping my fingers crossed that if Kurt Busch, as it seems to be the plan, if Kurt retires after this year, I think Ross Chastain needs to be the only choice for the one car Give him his shot because I think Ross goes out mm -hmm. and I think he instantly becomes a driver who could run for a championship, Randy. Well, he's uh, he's a wheel man, no doubt about that. And, you know, if you're in motorsports long enough, you're going to see bad situations yeah. happen. And, you know, you got to root for a guy like that because it's just unfortunate for that to happen so quick. And he's rebounded. And it's really good to see him le leading the points no right doubt. now. No doubt. Good dude. I, I love it. You know, when you're six points behind the guy who's leading the driver's championship and you're sitting in the top five in owner's standings, Al Nice has got to be sitting back going, I love this right now. Because for for a, a, an armed services veteran who's been through what he's been through, I did a magazine feature um, on Nice Motorsports last May, and, and for Al to want to give to the sport the way he's given after he's already given to our country the way yep. he has is is just outstanding and i love to see good things to hap happen to good people and i feel like this is a case of that so props to uh to ross and denise motorsports and i have heard that ross will be back in the truck at martinsville where i believe they have a legitimate shot to go win that oh race. yeah he could definitely that's win. interesting yeah. i would have uh would have thought that maybe that would have been well, one of reed's races. what's interesting is reed was scheduled to be in the truck in las vegas Vegas and oh, Ross ended that. up driving. Yeah, Re at Martinsville has not been on Reed's schedule at all to this point. Okay. Now, whether that changes, I don't know. But I know his uh, the first couple races he was scheduled to run, uh, to my knowledge, was Vegas, Texas, and Kansas. Okay. Um, trying to get him some mile and a half experience, ah, so uh, I'll, I'll check in on that and see if Timothy we can get Peters. Oh, by the way, yes, in the Tim second in the second truck. niece truck has not done bad. He's uh, not quite as high up in the standings, 13th in the championship uh, right now. I think he's actually a little bit better in the driver's standings. Just uh, yeah, he is. He's only 12 points outside and of the playoffs right now. And look out right for now. Timothy at Martinsville. You know, he I'm, won his first race with Strutmasters.com on that truck. Never forget it, and that is one of his best tracks. So, I'm praying that Nice Motorsports is able to find some sponsorship to get him in the truck at Martinsville. He's not currently scheduled in the truck. The, the point to be made here, too, with Nice, a lot of people probably still don't realize it, mm -hmm. is that they now have an alliance with GMS. And yes. I think that's made all the difference in yeah. the performance of those yeah. good equipment. Stop yeah. and consider they've had... Three, they've had two trucks in three truck races so far this season. And out of that, in six starts, they have five yep. top ten finishes. Yep. And I think that's huge for a team that just two years ago was struggling just to make it Absolutely. to the racetrack. So it's a huge credit to NASCAR and all the changes they've made with the truck series to get some of these smaller teams up into contention and doing stuff this year. It's it's great. No I doubt. love it. I think we need to see more it's of that. It's the only way that forward. series is going to yes. survive 
uh, is to have more parity across the series. Absolutely and it's good to right. see it's working so far. So continuing, continuing uh, a little bit into our lightning round, I had a topic actually from a tweet that I saw earlier in the show that I wanted to mention. Uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. over the weekend is heading to Chapel Hill tomorrow for the uh, Matthew Geller or Jeller, not quite sure how to pronounce it. Gefeller. No, Gefeller. Yes, okay. Gefeller. I, 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 was almost para I was almost <laughs> paranoid to say that because I'm like, oh, that can't be right, can it? But Randy would know better than I would. So the Matthew Gefeller Neurotrauma Symposium with his concussion doctor, Mickey Collins. And what's cool about this is Dr. Collins said that they're tracking referrals that come to his clinic from the release of Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s recent book last year. They're averaging five to six referrals a week because wow. of Junior's book. How cool is that? That's some impact. Well, you know, uh, I'm familiar with the Gefeller situation, and it was really sad, but, you know, it's, it's one of those things, something good has came out of it, and it's getting a lot of people to not bury their head in the sand, but to go and get help if they've got something going on. And head trauma is just nothing to, to play around with. I mean, it, it just isn't. And kudos to Dale Jr. for doing what he's done to – to get to get it to where it's actually manly mm -hmm. to Absolutely step right. out yes. of sports yes. and to go protect yourself because it's not worth losing your life. You and watch your brain uh, if you go to YouTube and pull up Graham Bensinger. Um, Graham has a, a TV show; it's a syndicated show. He did a, an entire show with Junior and also with Amy, and Junior was completely open and, I mean. I'm sure the book is even more so, obviously, but um, it's it's an incredible story, and and it took a lot of courage for Junior to to have gotten to where he has. I'm sure it was a very difficult book to write, but boy, if it's made that kind of a difference, that's amazing. And let's face it, times have changed. I mean, but I can remember yep. a time when guys would tape their eyelids open so they could oh, drive yeah. a race car, and they had no business being on the racetrack. Yep. Yes. And you know, now finally, <laughs> common sense is starting to prevail. All right. Tom, Tom just brought something to my attention on the computer scene. May I? Yes, please do. Breaking news. And I love this news. Yes. Carlin Racing has confirmed that Pato Award will drive the team's second entry for 11 races this season. Yes. That's the entry that uh, Charlie Kimball will fill out in the remaining races. Yes. So Pato and Kimball sharing the second Carlin car this season, and there will be a third Carlin Racing entry on track for the 103rd running of the Indianapolis 500 in May. This is awesome. So we went from 17 races to no races for Pato to a possibility of eight races to 12 of the 17 races confirmed in 2019. And I, I, Marshall Pruitt said this earlier today, and I 110% agree with him. Before we even start the season, based on the engineering staff, the cars, the improvements they've made, Carlin Racing is going to be the most improved team in IndyCar this season. It's just a matter of how high they're going to climb. And with Pato, I believe they're going to climb a lot. Oh, I agree. I think Pato is one of those extreme talents, almost prodigious talents that comes along once in a while. I think he showed that in the finale last year, and I'm thrilled that he's getting an opportunity to run a, a, a bunch of the schedule. That's great. Yes, so he's going to drive at Coda, Barber, Long Beach, both races at Indianapolis, Detroit, Road America, Toronto, Iowa, Mid-Ohio, Gateway, and Portland. So a huge opportunity for Pato Award, and we look forward to seeing him on track, not this weekend, but coming up in just a couple weeks in Austin, Texas, at Circuit yep. of the Americas. So that's that. exciting. And with that, we're going to step aside for the final time in this show. When we return, we'll throw a checkered flag on this edition of Motorsports Madness. Yeah, Randy's got the idea. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back to wrap it all up right after this. Here's an important message from Rad and this station. Hi, this is Bob Sheehan from Blues Traveler for Rad, recording artists against drunk driving. I like to party just as much as the next guy, maybe even more. But the one thing I won't do after I've had a few is get in the car and drive. Don't blow it. Always choose a designated driver. Remember, music lives, and so should you. Motorsports sales professionals. Performance Motorsports is looking to build a team of experienced media sales professionals 
to represent our programming to the industry's top companies, magazines, and racing series. If you have motorsport sales or marketing experience, know how to work with agencies, understand social media, and are incredibly creative when it comes to working with clients and promotions, then we want to hear from you. Top performers are richly rewarded. Your imagination is the only limit here. Call 717-749-0444. That's 717-749-0444. Or email us at scorpionradiogroup at gmail.com. You want to ask for Sue. You are a waste. A loser. Everyone hates you. Why don't you just stay in your car and keep driving? I'm serious. Drive until you run out of gas and get out of your car and walk until you find someone who doesn't think you're dumber than bricks. Could take a while, but at least all that walking might burn a couple of calories. You may not witness bullying like this every day. Your kids do. They want to help, but they don't know how. Visit StopBullying.gov to learn safe, simple ways your child can help stop bullying. Be more than a bystander at StopBullying.gov. A message from the Ad Council. You own a performance car and you know how to drive, but you want to learn real performance driving. Well, Bunky, get that car off the street and onto the track. Summit Point Motorsports Park, the Mid-Atlantic's premier road racing facility, located just over an hour from D.C. in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, is the place to go. And you'll find that Friday at the track is going to give you what you need. For less than a monthly car payment, you can attend this regularly scheduled one-day instructional event in your streetcar on one of Summit Point's three world-class road racing circuits. You'll receive classroom instruction, skid pad instruction in their cars, including front and rear skid control, and four 20-minute in-your-car instructional sessions from a professional instructor. Have fun, go fast, and really learn how to drive. Call 304-725-8444 for class schedules and details. That's 304-725-8444. Friday at the track at Summit Point Motorsports Park. Hi, I'm Tyler Reddick, and you're listening to Race Talk on the Performance Motorsports Network. So I'm going to fit one more tidbit in here, and I'm going to turn to Tom on this one. Percent chance that Tyler Reddick goes to victory lane in the Xfinity Series race at ISM Raceway on Saturday. I'd say 80%. After whole, after going toe-to-toe with Kyle Busch at Vegas, I am inclined to agree with you. Uh, Randy, I, I love this because everybody thought that Tyler Reddick going to RCR was going to slow him down, and he's kind of laughed in everybody's faces and said, uh, no. Try you again. know, their, their uh, Xfinity program has been has been strong historically, and now they've got a real wheel man over yep. there. And, mm-hmm. you know, I won't be surprised to see them win a, quite a few races this year. I believe they're going to. I'm excited for Tyler. It's great to see him in a great position to defend his championship, and I believe he, won't, he will not only win multiple races, but he will be back in the Final Four at Homestead, Miami, come the uh, third weekend in November. And with that, it's already time to close down this show. I can't believe it's gone by so quick randy thank you for coming and joining us tonight my it's been a blast pleasure. My, great pleasure. Time. my pleasure guys and thanks to you and chip for all you're doing for us here and uh just the support that you're giving us through strut masters we appreciate it very much we love racing and uh we know that uh, race fans drive vehicles that we have stuff for and absolutely we're smart enough <laughs> to right. know that uh when something bad happens, when your suspension lets you down, we won't. Give us a call. Yep. So with that, for Randy Pettit, Tom Baker, uh, Randy Miller, and Chris Murdoch behind the glass, and uh, all the folks that make this show possible, I'm Jacob Seelman. Keep it off the wall, folks. And if you're headed to a racetrack, we might just see you there. Till we meet again. You've been listening to Motorsports Madness with the Race Chaser Online crew. Stay tuned to Performance Motorsports Network for more race talk. For the latest motorsports news, visit racechaseronline.com. Motorsports Madness is a copyrighted production of the Performance Motorsports Network, www.performancemotorsportsnetwork.com. A member of the Scorpion Radio Group Incorporated and may not be rebroadcast, replicated, or saved in any media without the explicit written permission of PMN. Check out our Facebook page or our section in the PMN website. The opinions expressed on this program are those of the host, co-hosts, and guests and do not necessarily reflect those of the management and ownership of either the Performance Motorsports Network or Scorpion Radio Group Incorporated, the advertisers, or the marketing partners. Be listening again next week when the madness returns on Monday night at 7 Eastern. Until then, keep it off the wall and keep the shiny side up.